Heather Frederick, Director of Research and Publications at Longyear Museum. Welcome to a series about hymns with words by Mary Baker Eddy. There's a story behind each of Mrs. Eddy's poems, especially the seven poems set to music in the Christian Science Hymnal. Those stories are what this series is about. We'll be bringing the poems to you in the chronological order in which she wrote them, starting with Christ My Refuge. In her later years, Mary Baker Eddy recalled, when I was a child, it was easier for me to write in poetry than in prose. As a young girl growing up on her family's farm in Bow, New Hampshire, Mary Baker poured her heart out in poems. Poetry suited my emotions better than prose, she tells us. She told one of her household workers, when I first went to school, I would write my compositions in poetry. One of the teachers went to mother and said, do you know Mary is a born poet? Mother said, no, but she's always making rhymes. Mrs. Eddy recalled writing verses under an apple tree and bringing them to her mother to read and sharing them with her brother Albert and others in her family. Some of her earliest published works before her discovery of Christian science are poems that appeared in newspapers and magazines. Later, she remarked, I thought once that my mission was to write poetry, but my life has had more prose than poetry in it. Her husband, Asa Gilbert Eddy, observed, Mrs. Eddy's works are the outgrowths of her life. This is so true. Many of her writings were born of her own often hard-earned life experiences including the seven poems, prayers really, set to music in the Christian Science Hymnal. Each of these outpourings of her heart offers a window into her life at a particular point in time. Her poem, Christ My Refuge, dates as one of Mary Baker Eddy's earliest published writings on Christian science. In February 1868, an initial version was featured on the front page of the Lynn Reporter, under the name Mary M. Patterson, as Mrs. Eddy was known at that time. It began, Over the voice harp of my soul there sweeps a hand, beyond this mortal weak control from some soft band. What had been going on in her life as she wrote these lines? Two years earlier, at the beginning of 1866, she had been mired in a decades-long struggle with illness, lack, and loss. Throughout her girlhood and beyond, her health was frail. At 20, she lost her beloved brother Albert. By 23, she was a young widow, expecting a child. In quick succession, she lost her mother and a fiancé. Her little boy was taken from her and fostered out to a friend of the baker's by well-meaning family members. Mary remarried, hoping to be able to provide a home for her son. But this was not to be. She and her husband, Daniel Patterson, had been foreclosed on, and she was trying unsuccessfully to hold their crumbling union together. Then, in 1866, things changed dramatically. After a critical accident on an icy winter evening, she experienced a life-changing healing through spiritual means alone, a healing that set her course on a completely different direction. She had embarked on the journey that she describes for us in Science and Health with Key to the Scriptures. For three years after my discovery, I sought the solution of this problem of mind healing, searched the Scriptures and read little else, kept aloof from society, and devoted time and energies to discovering a positive rule. As she pondered and prayed to understand the science behind her healing and her ability to heal others, there were challenges. Desertion by her often absent husband led to financial instability. She had no home of her own, moving instead from boarding house to boarding house. In the midst of these winds and waves of life, but inspired by her growing understanding, she composed the poem that would become Christ My Refuge. The version published in February 1868 in the Lynn Reporter included lines that hint at the poem to come. Over the waves of error here, times Galilee, aid me to walk, Christ ever near, to strengthen me, and fix my sight on God, the rock upon my shore. 
against which the waves and winds may shock, oh, nevermore. You can really see her turning to God for help here, can't you? And feel the yearning she has for solid ground, for spiritual bedrock, a refuge from error's shifting tides. That summer, rooming in Amesbury, Massachusetts, her poem appeared again in similar form, this time in the Amesbury Villager. During this time, she was demonstrating Christian healing, teaching it to her first students, and writing. Within a decade, she'd published Science and Health, and be on her way to founding a church and a worldwide movement. Over the next 40 years, Mrs. Eddy would return to this poem again and again, rewording it to fit her own growing spiritual understanding. Clearly, the message was important to her, and one that she felt was important for us. In 1876, shortly after the first edition of Science and Health was published, the poem would appear in the Lynn transcript under the title Rock of Ages. This version, in Mrs. Eddy's own handwriting, from Longyear's collection, is very close to that one. In June 1883, she was teaching in Boston at her Massachusetts Metaphysical College. That month, a newly revised version of the poem, now titled Christ My Refuge, was published in the second issue of the Journal of Christian Science. It wasn't until the April 1887 version, in the renamed Christian Science Journal, that the phrase, a world more bright, appeared. Later that year, in the November journal, the stanza took the form closest to what we know today, with a small but significant difference. Then his unveiled sweet mercies show life's burdens light. I kiss the cross and wait to know a world more bright. In 1909, Mrs. Eddy revised that third line to, and wake to know a world more bright. Just one word, but what a world of difference. Christ My Refuge was the first of her poems to be included in an official Christian science hymnal, set to music by Lyman Brackett, who composed 99 of the hymns in that original 1892 edition. In 1905, at Mrs. Eddy's request, her poem was set to new music by William Lyman Johnson, son of a member of the Christian Science Board of Directors. The title of Johnson's musical setting, Pleasant Street, reminds us of Pleasant View, Mrs. Eddy's beloved New Hampshire home located on Pleasant Street in Concord, where she was then living. In Christ My Refuge, as in each of her poems in the hymnal, Mary Baker Eddy is speaking to us from her heart. And as she tells us, when the heart speaks, however simple the words, its language is always acceptable to those who have hearts. Christ My Refuge by Mary Baker Eddy. O'er waiting harp strings of the mind, there sweeps a strain. Low, sad and sweet, whose measures bind the power of pain, and wake a white-winged angel throng of thoughts, illumined by faith, and breathe in raptured song, with love perfumed. Then his unveiled sweet mercies show life's burdens light. I kiss the cross, and wake to know a world more bright. And o'er earth's troubled, angry sea, I see Christ walk, and come to me, and tenderly, divinely talk. Thus truth and grounds me on the rock, upon life's shore, against which the winds and waves can shock, oh, nevermore. From tired joy and grief afar, and nearer thee, Father, where thine own children are, I love to be. My prayer, some daily good to do to thine, for thee, an offering pure of love, whereto God leadeth me.